it's because the passenger has the door open and then don't want to close it. Oh my god. I need help. Now I'm going to be real, real honest, okay, about Uber and Lyft, especially Uber. Not so much as Lyft, but definitely, definitely Uber, okay? When Uber came into town years ago, it was a good alternative for a side hustle to make some extra cash. That's how I looked at it when I joined it. When I joined the platform, I was just looking for some extra gambling money. That was about it. I didn't look at it as a job. I didn't look at it as a full-time job or nothing like that. I looked at it for what the app was. If you have some spare time, maybe use it to make some money. And that's how I use the app. And But that was years ago right things have changed a lot of things have changed but it just seems some things remain the same so minding my business on youtube i come across dirty trucking's community post shout out to dirty trucking she says she received a email from uber about a rider complaining about the service right now before i get into what the letter says i'm just simply gonna say this uber put so much emphasis in the riders then they do the drivers they really do believe me i have been victim of many many emails some of which is when i was the first one to actually start having cameras in my car before dash cameras inside the car doing uber before it was even a thing i was doing it for the start i got an email a writer complained about me having my camera inside my car they felt that it was an invasion of privacy and the cleveland manager asked me to turn the camera away when somebody is in my car i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna do that i didn't do it what i'm looking like oh okay well you getting in my car i'm gonna turn the camera off and whatever goes on in that car via the the rider i'm gonna get blamed for it it's gonna be a matter of he say she say i'm not gonna have no proof of what she said happened or didn't happen see the problem with uber is that they again take so much emphasis in their riders that they believe everything that they riders say about the driver forget the fact that it's the driver's car you're in my car you're not in uber's car you're not in uber's taxi you're in my car i'm using my car to take you around and here you are complaining to uber about what i have said or what's going on in my car now the only complaint that should be valid from a rider i i do admit it if the driver is being disrespectful if the driver is being reckless if the driver is doing something that the driver is not supposed to do then you are valid in what you're saying to your complaint if you're just in there just being one of those karens and you want the driver to go this way but the driver the driver choose to go another way i.e follow the jeep and you're going to get mad about it and you're going to email uber and say some things that would get the driver put off the platform then that's wrong that is wrong that is not right that's why me personally, I, I stopped doing Uber years ago. I would not do Uber no more. I'm cool on a stranger getting in my car telling me what to do, where to go, what which way, what I'm supposed to be doing. Disrespecting my car, putting their feet up on, it, on the seats, throwing up in my car, slamming my doors, telling me what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're not doing that no more. We're not doing that no more. All these videos, these new videos that I see of Uber passengers disrespecting the driver, one of which canceled the ride. The driver pulled over. Driver like, no, nah, we ain't going nowhere. You canceled the ride. That person gets out the car, 
But before they get out the car, they say, I, I should bust out your window. Well, I should bust your ass. And the, and the passenger actually did bust out the young man's window. Yeah, I mean, since you can't, so I can't do anything. Uh, I'm sorry, you know. Well, I didn't cancel the ride. Yeah, you can't send other. Well, I can't. I'm not, I'm I can't do that. Out the, I can't do that. Well, this I'm sorry. is scary. I'm not gonna get out. I'm not gonna get out the car. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, actually, you can't. So I can't do anything. You just need to leave the car. Three, four, seven, eight. What's the address? The emergency. Hi, I'm in front of the Ringing Star uh, Liberty Center. Um, I have a Uber passenger here, and they she doesn't want to leave my car. And I need assistance. Can you tell them? Yes, um, I need a, a police officer here at Ringy Star Learning this Center. This is ridiculous. I'm gonna call these fucking people. So I have an Uber passenger. And they, she doesn't leave my car. I don't want to leave my oh car. My this is ridiculous. You have to be kidding me. I'm about uh -huh. to take a picture of you. This can't be serious. You can't drop me off at the stop light. Uh, he's right in the corner of. Uh, the oil drive? Yeah. It's because I'm, the passenger the has the door open and don't want to the close it. Oh my god. I need help. Just let me Oh my gosh, you posted my yeah, because my, my uh, back window is busted. Yes, I am here. My blink light, uh, my blinkers are on, and the suspect just leave the scene. Uh, he went down uh, southwest uh, Mableton Parkway. His back window. He's done for the night, and now he has to go and get his back window repaired. He had to call up Safe Light or something like that. All the profits that he might have made for that night is gone, all because of one passenger being the asshole. And you get this all the time. And that's why I'm looking at you drivers out there that's calling yourself transitioning from the truck to doing Uber and over here saying, oh, this is the best life of my life. I'm making all this money that I made ever made in the truck. Well, who did you drive for? Who did you drive for? At one point, driver, you was making a lot of money with the truck. You wasn't complaining back then. And you saw success from the funds that you made from the truck. Now the money is not, it's, it's not money in no more okay and you decide to transition to uber of all things now shout out to you for making money with uber hey i'm not going to cap you can make some money with uber but number one you're putting a lot of stress on your vehicle if your vehicle is not stressed out already take my word for it take my word for it in two months time i put over 200,000 miles on my vehicle and after that my vehicle my initial Uber vehicle that I used for Uber did not last no more after that. You also had to realize you had to put in a lot of maintenance because you putting in a lot of additional miles than what you was doing prior to doing Uber all day, every day, 24 hours a day. Now I understand a lot of you guys is trying to chase that bag and that is, that's, that's the whole point of a side hustle is to save up additional money along with the money that you already have or that you already make. Uber was never intended to be a full-time job. Now, some foreigners in New York City and probably Miami and, and some of the big city places made money because they turned it into a full-time job, but Uber was not intended to be a full-time job job it was intended to be a side hustle that's what it was intended to be you get up you say you got about 10 15 minutes maybe you can rock out a couple of rides make a couple of hundred dollars that's it done but in the age of uber and lyft right now the passengers is being more according to the platform than it is the drivers that actually drives it and that's crazy 
That is crazy. Uber and Lyft needs to realize and keep in mind that the drivers aren't employees. And that's what Uber and Lyft keeps forgetting. They keep forgetting that we're not employees. They're not employed. They're 1099 independent contractors using their own vehicles and insurance. You're nothing but a broker. You are in between, between the rider and the driver. That's it. Once they go through the Uber app, the, the ride between the driver and the passenger, that is it. But see, Uber takes emphasis. As I said before, and I will keep saying it, they take emphasis in their passengers over. You could tell that because they give the riders discounts. They believe the riders and what they do for the drivers nothing nothing somebody throw up in your car you put in a request for it. uber gotta ask the rider if 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 that's true and then about a week later they'll give you the money to get it clean but if the rider says nah i didn't do that i i, I don't know what they're talking about then they gotta go through another piece of investigating because they gotta call you back and be like well that passenger said that they didn't do it so you have to you have to send in proof of the mess that that passenger made and here goes another couple of weeks to go by in order for uber to finally charge the passenger for the mess they made in your car again uber just got to realize that they are a software their tech their app the people that work in uber is not driving their cars to uber anybody maybe they did it in the beginning but i damn sure guarantee you that they're not doing it now not with the fact that they got self-driving cars out here but they gotta they gotta realize they gotta understand that they ain't nothing but a broker between the drivers and the riders so before we get on up out of here let's touch on the message from uber that dirty trucking received now she says that due to unfortunate circumstances with the rental car she's not able to do uber anymore and she haven't been ubering since april 9th but she just received this message in her email yesterday so you probably got to understand that this is probably a late message coming from a writer that she may had during the time that she was driving uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that oh, okay well i haven't been driving since april 9th and then you just send me an email about a passenger this could probably happen prior to when you actually stop driving in that message it says hello we received feedback from a writer that you may have made comments during a recent trip that felt discriminatory okay let me just stop right there because it goes on but let me stop right there you're going to send me a message like that and telling me that somebody told you that i said something that may that may be offensive or discriminatory why not just tell me what they said that i said and then I could turn around and tell you that I, if I said it or not. But what is discriminatory though? What did I say that they felt discriminatory? And if they felt discriminatory, was the ride completed? Did they get out of the ride? Did they say something to me? This is very vague, Uber. This is very vague. Tell me what, tell me what I said. It goes on to say, while some comments may be interpreted differently, then intended it's important everyone feels safe and welcome hmm. okay safe and welcome well you're in my car so let's talk about safe and welcome right let's talk about that because this is a platform that was started years ago making strangers come in contact with strangers a cab is different the cab is different. Oh, the cab. The cab got insignias out. The cab got logos. What you getting into when you get into a cab? Oh, it's a yellow cab. Oh, it's a green cab. Oh, it's a, 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 a merry cab. Oh, it's a cab because there's a taxi insignia outside of the car. What you're getting into? Who to contact if that ride goes wrong? Uber, on the other hand, you're putting strangers with strangers. I don't know you from a can of milk. I only see a picture, a name, and that's it. Sometimes when somebody put an Uber request in, it's not always in 
intended for the person that put it in. That person probably sends an Uber to pick somebody else up. And see, the driver and the passenger don't know that. Well, the passenger knows it, but the driver don't. The driver thinks that they come in to pick up that person that put in the Uber. But then when they get there to pick them up, oh, well, that's my best friend. And they put the, they, they requested an Uber for me so I can get home. So the conversation between two strangers can always be interpreted something different. But you got to realize you putting two strangers together. So you don't even know how that conversation is going to go after hi. How you doing? How's your day? Or whatever. Could be interpreted that the, the person that gets in the car don't like rap music. It could be interpreted that the person that get in your car don't like country music. It's interpreted that somebody gets in your car and tells you what to do. Entitlement is not a requirement. So that's the reason, again, that's the reason or one of the few reasons why I choose to stop doing Uber. Other than the fact that the, the, the passengers are rude and you put a lot of stress and unwanted maintenance on your vehicles. Again, Uber is not meant to be a full time job. It's only meant as a side hustle. Back to the letter, it says our community guidelines don't tolerate any discrimination based on age. And that was it. That was it. So maybe a young rider got in, the, in, in her car, maybe too young, because I've seen some people have been trying to put their six-year-olds, their five-year-olds, their eight-year-olds in the car and then expect the Uber driver to be a school bus driver. That's not my responsibility. I'm not, if you're not in the car with your kid, then your kid cannot ride. Is that discriminatory towards age? I guess so. And if it is, so be it. You're not putting your kid in my car without you being in it. If you want me to take your kid to school, you get in the car, we're gonna go to the school. And if you want me to take you back, that'll be a round trip that's fine i'll do that but if you just put your kid in the car and just say hey take him from point a to point b and you want me to take responsibility of your kid no that's not going to happen it's not a job it's a side hustle